Hello, my name is Rhys Watts. I am an apprentice technician in the electronic engineering department at Gower College, Swansea. And today I'm going to be doing a masterclass on a PCB design software that we commonly use within the college called Autodesk Eagle. So let's get started. Okay, so after opening Eagle, this is the first screen that will display for you. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, New, then Schematic. This will open up a fresh page for you with many different icons down the side. These are all different tools, but we'll get to that later. The first tool that we are going to use is Add Part. This allows us to enter the part library for the software. And the first part we are going to want to search is a frame. This allows us to keep all the components within a frame and then thus keeping everything as neat as possible. So seeing that we are creating a fairly small schematic, we're going to use A4 lock here. So select it, either double click or go down and hit OK. And we have a center point down here, if you can see. So I'm just going to put the crosshair on that and click the left button on my mouse. Now you'll get a duplicate here, ready to place again, but that's all you have to do is hit escape on your keyboard and it will bring the parts up again ready for our first component. So the first component that we are going to add is going to be the 555 IC itself. Now certain components require certain characters after them in order for it to search for the exact required component. So in this case we're going to put NE555 and then an asterisk and then hit enter. I will bring up these here. And then we're going to bring this drop down arrow here. Now, as we're going to be doing a simple board, we're going to be using a th the through hole component. But as you can see, we have the surface mount component too. So if we click that and then click OK, it will then bring us the component part onto the schematic. Now, we're going to want the main IC to be in the center so that we can build everything else around it. And it's easy to connect to then. So the second group of components we are going to be adding onto the schematic are going to be resistors. So we're going to head back over to the add part tool here. As you can see, I've pre-typed in resistor. This is a much more simple search. Once you've hit enter, you will see REU here, which stands for European Specification Resistors. Hit the drop down tab. And we're going to select the 0204-7 option as this is the most common resistor that we use within the college. So once you've clicked that, we're going to hit OK. And we're going to place three resistors onto the schematic, ready to position. After placing the resistors into the frame, you're going to want to go back to the Add Part tool. Now, either if you've still got a resistor selected, just hit Escape, or whereas I haven't, I'm going to click back on Add Part. And now you're going to want to type in capacitor and then you'll get these results here and we're going to want to hit ceu same as reu for the resistors and now we don't want a polarized capacitor so we're going to go ceu and the one we're going to select for the specific size that we want to ensure that our physical capacitors when we manufacture the board are going to fit is going to be this one here so hit it and then click OK. And now we only need two of these. So we're just going to simply place one, two capacitors and hit escape again. So following adding the capacitors into the schematic, the next component we are going to need is an LED. This is going to act as a display for us to know that the timing and the clock pulse is working correctly on the chip. So either hit escape again if you've got a capacitor selected or just go to add part here and type in LED. And then what we're going to do is just scroll down to here. And we're going to select the LED 5 millimeter, as this is the most common one we use within the college. So then we're going to hit OK and place it onto the schematic. The final two parts we are going to add into our schematic is going to be the positive and ground rail. Now these aren't physical components, but they allow power to flow through the circuit when connecting it all up together and will help us when we go on to create the actual PCB. 
So what we're going to do is going to go to add part and type in plus 5V, so plus 5 volts. And now you can either select this one or this one here. I personally prefer this one here. So then we're going to hit OK, add this onto the schematic and then hit escape again and simply type in GND for ground, hit enter. And once again, you can use this one or this one here, but I prefer this one. So we're going to hit OK and then place this onto the schematic. So now we're going to move on to connecting all of the components together. This will allow the software to recognize all of the connections so that they are correct for when we route the board. Now the components don't exactly have to be placed where I place them as long as all of the connections are going to the right pins. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up all the resistors in the position that I want them. But before that, we're going to get all of the other components out of the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the group tool. And we're going to simply drag them across the tools you want to select like this. And we're going to zoom in and each component has a small cross on them. So what we're going to want to do is just click that and it allows us to move the components out the way. And what you can do on your mouse is use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out like this. And to center the frame, you can use this tool up here called Zoom to Fit, which allows us to center that. So we're going to carry on moving the unnecessary components out of the way, like so. So once we've done that, I want to rotate these resistors so that they are sitting vertical. So the tool for that is Rotate. Now you can either click Rotate and rotate the components like this, or hover over the component, right click, and then we're going to go Rotate, which will do it like that. Okay, so I want them vertical, so I'm going to put them all vertical like so, and then select the Move tool in order to move the components to where you want them. So I'm going to move R3 to over here. I'm going to move R2 to about here and R1 to about here like so. Next, I'm going to place the capacitors where I want them. So I would like C1 to go over here underneath R1 and R2. And then C2 is going to go on its own over here. And now we can put the LED under R3, like this. Now following your average schematic, ground tends to be on the bottom. So I'm going to place ground here, and then your positive rail is usually on the top. This is just for ease of understanding how the schematic is going to work. Okay, so now we are ready to move on to netting the whole schematic. Okay, so before I begin to connect all of the components together, I want pin 8 here to be on the other side. This will create for a much neater schematic as pin 8 will go directly to the positive here. So what I'm going to do is select rotate. and I'm going to click it until pin 8 is on the other side. And now we are ready to go. After doing that, I'm going to go over to the net tool here. And what I'm going to do is if I zoom in using the scroll wheel, and I hover over a component leg, then you can see a green circle appear here. So this indicates that a connection is ready to be made. So what I'm going to do is click left button on my mouse once, and then move down to the next component, and then hit the left button on my mouse again, and now we have a connection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build all of this here now, and then we'll get back with you when I'm done. One other brief thing before I carry on building this for you, is that if I want to create an angle to connect, for example, from here to here, what I'm going to want to do is, same again, click it with the left button on the mouse. And now sometimes, automatically, if you go to a height and then go across with your mouse, it will work. But if not, what you can do is you can go up to a height, left click on your mouse, and then go across like so.
Okay, so we are now at the stage where the schematic side of things is completed. If it looks like this and you followed me, great, or if you give it a go yourself and it doesn't look exactly the same, even better, as long as you've followed all these pin connections and they are connected to the right place, we are ready to move on. So if we go up to generate slash switch to board here, this option will open the PCB side of things. So if we click that, you get a completely different screen. Now, don't panic, I've already clicked on this, but you will get a notification at the top here, a warning. If you just click yes, it will instantly open this page. So this yellow outlined black box here is the dimensions of the physical board that you will use to route your connections. And we can also alter that. So we'll get onto altering that now to make it more suited to the size of this board. Okay, so in order to change the size of the box here, the first thing we're going to want to do is go to grid and change this drop down bar to millimeters. And then we're going to change this value here to 0 0.01. This will allow us to have the most freedom in moving the components and also in changing the size of the box here. So what you're going to want to do then is hit OK. And now we are ready to start altering this. So what we're going to do is click the group tool and select any line. And then for example, we're going to change this to a smaller number. So we'll go with 60. So that will alter that. And then we're also going to change this to 62, which will bring it both level. And now we're going to want to select the bottom line here. And we're going to change this to 60. And then we're going to go back up here to change this to 62. Hit enter. And now we have a much more suitable and smaller box for the components that will also give us enough room in order to route the tracks, but not too big to where it's pointless. Okay, so we are now ready to begin placing the components in their allocated place onto the board. And what I personally like to do is switch back to the schematic look how the schematic set up and follow that roughly. So I'm going to begin with placing the chip into the center. So what we're going to do is use the move tool. And if you scroll in, like I mentioned before, you will see a yellow cross. So you're going to place on that. Click it once. And then what you can do is use your right button on the mouse to rotate it. So I'm going to place it vertically in the center for now, like so. And all these yellow lines indicate all of these green nets that we have made. So that's why it was important to get all of these connections right in order for all of these nets to be connected to the right pins so that when we route, all of the tracks are going to the correct places. So let's carry on with placing the other components onto the board. So the first one I am going to do is R1 here. So with the move tool selected, I'm going to click on the resistor. And then as you can see, the nets are starting to cross over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click to rotate until they're fairly nice and neat. And for now, I'm just going to place it there. As you can see, I've placed it here due to the connections being here and we've got one coming off to one of the other resistors. So what we can do then is move that resistor close to this to allow for a short track. Now, another very handy tool is this tool here called Rat's Nest. So if I was to click this, you will notice that some of these nets change. This basically helps you connect nets in a more efficient way. So if I click this tool here, you can see that the nets change slightly to find a better path of connection.
Okay, so we are now ready to begin routing the board with the tracks. So the tool we're going to use is Root Airwire here. So if we click on this, this will open up some extra tools at the top here. Now width stands for the track width. So 0.15 is too small for our Miller machine. So we're gonna select 0.5 for the signal. As you can see, this is a signal track. So 0.5 millimeter for those and for ground. And then you can see the power tracks here. We're gonna select 0.7 for that. We just wanna differ between the two different types of tracks. Another important thing to mention is when beginning to root, we do not want any corner angles like this as that is too tight of an angle for the miller machine to cut and it won't cut it properly. So if I go control Z and again, I'm going to do this and then we're gonna bring it in at an angle like so. So the same with doing the nets, if you, as you're moving, you just click and it'll create another angle and then we're gonna go over to here. You can see the highlighted pad that it needs to go to and it locks on and then you click your left button on your mouse again to make the connection. So we have made that connection now. So let's get on with doing the rest of the board. Okay, so on completion of routing the board, it should look something like this. Now, if you want to, you can go over to the move tool here. I've got it selected ready in order to tidy up any of the tracks that you're not too happy with. So for example, if I wanted to move this line that's going up here over, I could go like this, just click on it once with the left click of the mouse and then drag it over to make a neater connection like so. And I can do the same here. If I was to move this like that to make that a, a neater connection, less work for the Miller machine to do. And I'm quite happy with that. So that's that completed. The final step we're going to do is if we go down to this drop down arrow here and then go up to design rule check, this will check if there are any incorrections with the routing that I've done. So what we're going to do is you have many things you can change on here, but we're just going to do a simple DRC. So if we click check, and usually if there was something wrong, an error message would come up here. Like for example, if we'd failed to connect a certain connection, but fortunately everything's done as it should be. So this completes our session today. I really hope you enjoyed and I hope that you progress with this program. Thank you for watching.